a three things you loved to see and three things you didn't love to see from the BYU game edition of the Always Irish Show. As always, you can find that program on YouTube. Do it, subscribe if you haven't yet. Appreciate it very much. Give the video a thumbs up. Helps as well. Notifications on. That way you'll be alerted every time a new episode drops. Twitter, search bar, Always Irish, rat, Always Irish, Inc. Emails, Always Irish, at gmail.com. Audio only, anywhere you want me. You could give me a call in line, 312-988-15. I'm recording this Monday afternoon. Great morning show. Callers galore. A lot of good thoughts. Jam phone lines. Keep it coming. USA Today, Fighting Irish Wire. Look it up. All the articles I write. Nick Chepkowski, managing editor, everybody else. Good team over there. Make it a part of your daily Notre Dame routine. All right, so welcome in. There's no doubt about it. The biggest goal, the biggest point of Las Vegas and BYU in that game and everything, mission accomplished, you won the game. That's absolutely always the number one most important thing in college football. You got to win them. Needed this win in the worst way, got it. Great job. That's got to be said right away. But with the win in the books, it's always helpful. Call timeout, step back, itemize out some specific things you really liked, really didn't like, so that they're top of mind as we monitor them moving forward in what should be the next two games at home You should be able to work on some things, get some things done. Let's get into three positives, three negatives from the BYU affair. Positive one, Drew Pine. He is playing about as well as anybody could ask somebody with the physical stature and natural gifts of Drew Pine to play quarterback in Notre Dame. Outside the batted ball, absolutely terrific night. And We need it to continue, even if, I was thinking about this, even if you do not think Pines, the long-term elite window answer for Notre Dame at quarterback, he's holding things together right now, and that is critically important. I've had people say, This whole window now is like whatever because Pine ain't going to be the guy when we're ready to win a playoff game anyway. So, you know, what what is that? No. He's doing a good job of trying to patchwork some momentum together and make sure you don't totally spiral out of control to where recruiting goes dark on you really bad, really fast. Like, even if you don't, think Pine is the long-term playoff game-winning quarterback. He's serving a critically important role right now. When we need him, off the Buckner injury, a bad early start, like he has become a stabilizing force the last two and a half games, and I don't know if anybody expected that. Really good job by him right now. Making good decisions, protecting the ball, He's been very accurate, above 70%. Uh, I think he was even close, 74%. Um, And that's the deal. When you don't have a huge power arm, but you're not a burner fast guy, and you're not that tall, I need you to be really accurate then to give me some upside. He has been. Really good job by him. Keep it up. I don't know how much more I could physically ask out of Drew Pine. He's doing a good job. All right? Now, we can have the debate, and we do all the time, about the big picture, long-term quarterback room at Notre Dame and all the instability there. And, And that is a worthwhile, legitimate discussion that has to be had, but not in this show. He's doing a damn good job. Positive two. The offense overall is slowly expanding. 
which is what we all said coming out of the bye had to happen. The passing game is not Ohio State. It is not USC. It's not going to be this year. Even just getting Jaden Thomas in there with uh, coming back for the short ball play, uh, made a, a few catches, flash, kind of a spark, swaggy, energetic. Even just him getting involved that much on top of the backs, all three of them still doing good things, on top of Mayer, and then Styles, your number one, number one target. Like, it may not seem like much, but getting Jaden Thomas a few catches and a touchdown counts as the offense expanding. It may not be enough for you, but realistically, that's like a mega improvement over what we're used to. So that's a positive. They are starting to open up the middle of the field a little deeper. They're not playing in a 12-yard box. That is all you would have to defend Notre Dame in the first few weeks. Like, things are opening up a little bit. Week by week, it's just not as fast as we want. But they are expanding. Here's the other thing I like. I like the balance. The last two games, the pass game and the run game, it's not been all one or the other. It's been fairly balanced in both the last two games in terms of yardage gained each way. I like that. I like that, that you're not all slanted one way or the other. I really like that. Keep that going. All right? So that's positive too. It isn't as fast as any of us like, but the offense is slowly taking more on and expanding a little bit. Positive three. Well, the defense has a lot to clean up and a lot to nitpick. They still only gave up 20 points to a very dangerous quarterback. And I think that's a good place to be when you could say, Man, we had these huge mistakes on defense here. You know, third and 17 run play up the middle, first down, backed up on their own two. The blitz again, nobody on the back end touched that. Like, to be able to critique these catastrophic issues and still say you only gave up 20 overall, good job. Like, good job. If I have that much to complain about and you still only gave up 20, it's hard to say I can't live with that. Giving up 20 is a winning effort in football every week for anybody. So that's a positive. There's a lot to clean up in a 20-point effort. Let's flip it. Negative one. Could have really... Stuck it to, and I don't want to say blown out, but you could have looked a lot better and won by two or three scores or more in both the last two ball games. Could have blown out North Carolina and BYU. Notre Dame had chances in each of these ball games. Like, score, got to stop, getting the ball back with momentum, ready to go up and really... Really stick it to them. Drive the stake in. Both those games. But we didn't. We didn't do it. And it got stressful late. Harder than it has to be. All of that. All of that. Is that all just part of the learning curve? Uh, uh, the new vibe? Like learning how to win and be, have the killer instinct? The non-killer instinct feels bad to Notre Dame people because it's a Kelly hangover. We always want to know why Kelly just couldn't blow out bad teams or teams you're ahead of. So is it just a learning curve or is it as simple as, even as a Notre Dame lover, I could say, are we just not good enough this year to ask for that and realistically expect it? Like, is there too much in the process of being calibrated right now 
and all the newness and the youngness and this and that in different areas of the coaching and team. Maybe it's not even fair of me to say you should blow somebody out, you know, the way we're built this year. I don't know. I'm genuinely asking. But it's worth noting. Notre Dame was in prime position to put both these teams away and regrow some of my hair in the fourth quarter. Didn't. Process. Work towards that. Negative two. Third and fourth down and short in red zone offense. Notre Dame is in the lower quadrant of the rankings here in terms of successes there. Just has to improve. Those are the most important plays of the game. Third and fourth and short in the red zone. I need you to do two things. One is, if you decide to run a very straightforward run play in any of these dynamics, third and short, fourth and short red zone, fine. I need it to go to estimate, and I need you to block it and be play bully ball. If you're not going to do that, then I need you to be creative. Get cute. I see teams every week in college and the pros. Cute little plays in the red zone, a trick little misdirection, guy wide out, whatever. Whatever. What I can't have is Notre Dame being neither. Neither. Playing bully ball on fourth and short, you don't get any movement. Can't have that. So you're not allowed to not push your way and get it. And you can't not be creative either. We're not doing either. We're running boring, predictable plays, getting no blocking. Can't have it. Play bully ball and win it. Or if you can't, get creative. Those are the options. Those are numbers that need to improve quickly or Notre Dame's not going to beat Clemson and USC. Third and fourth and short red zone. You cannot make mistakes and think you're going to beat Clemson and USC coming up. Maybe even Syracuse. Tighten it up. Either be bullies or get creative. You can't be neither. And I'd prefer you to be a little of both, but you definitely can't be neither. Right now, we're neither. Negative number three. Even though the defense got an interception play, one we've all been begging for, and a safety, big lapses keep happening. Big lapses keep happening, and they can't. And we're not used to it from Notre Dame teams. I don't want to get used to it either. Third and 17 run play from the two for a first down, you're dead. Like, that's not real life. I died on the couch watching it. No, that's not real life. Safety blitz doesn't get all wide open. I I just, that's not real life. That's not real life. Tighten it up. Tighten it up. Even though you only gave up 20, that's horrible. And quite frankly, I do, I honestly feel There's a higher standard with which I grade the defense because they came into the year starting further down the path towards elite than the offense. So I do not grade these the same because they're not starting in the same spot. So I, I look at them different. I expect more out of the D. Tighten it up. So big picture, here's what we got. Positives. Drew Pine, the offense is expanding. And the defense has a lot of work to do in a game they gave up 20 points. Negatives. We could be blowing these teams out. The last two weeks didn't. Short yardage and red zone. Notre Dame has not been good offensively. Really got to get that in shape. I feel like they use Mayer everywhere down the field except for in the red zone. So I, I don't get that. And then number three, the big defensive lapses. You just can't get to where I got to worry. Any play could be that busted coverage touchdown. We just haven't had to worry about that the last handful of years. Okay? So big picture, though, you're now on a winning streak. 
offensively, you're trending up. And you have two very, very winnable home games to get you prepared to go to the weird dome environment at Syracuse and hopefully build yourself a bridge for a huge matchup November 5th against Clemson under the lights in South Bend. So take these items, analyze them, and look at how they improve or don't improve in this next ball game. Also, is there any big picture stuff I missed? If there is, let me know what would have been on your list or where I missed something. Have a good one.